So I was going to show you a short video, but we've had some technical issues this morning, so we'll skip that, um, and I'll just give you Korero instead. So, um, obviously my role is to be, or um, amplify, be the microphone for the um, consumer and family fan out voice within this um, project and within the programme generally. And one of the things that I naturally do is check in with um, my colleagues, the consumers, uh, consumer advisors, family advisors around the country. And speaking recently with a colleague, um, what he said was really quite positive and there's quite a cause for optimism. Um, he said, my DHB is doing a focused push towards a significant reduction in seclusion. They're using visual reminders which are used to confirm a notable downward trend and that's being publicised within the ward environment so everybody can see it. There are a number of months now where they've achieved zero seclusion consistently, so that's a really positive message about um, the, the possibility of achieving zero seclusion. And the management are very focused on sustaining and building on the success. He said that consumer experience on the ward is improving in other ways as a result of the zero seclusion project. And one of the things that the manager of that particular environment is doing really well is bringing along some of the staff who have been there for a long period of time and who are perhaps most sceptical about achieving zero seclusion. There's been an increase in the usage of peer workers on the wards and they're finding a positive benefit of that, so really um, encourage more um, usage of peer staff, including recognising the value of peer advocacy. And one of the other things that they've done is they've removed the chairs from the nurses' station. So the nurses can't hang around in the nurses' station anymore. If you have to stand to do your data entry, you're going to get your data entry done fast. <laughs> And um, the reality is good nursing doesn't happen behind glass. Good nursing happens face to face with people. There's been increased staff and consumer engagement addressing issues so that before those issues might grow and become potential points of conflict, those issues are dealt with. And he said, um, in conclusion, when he was speaking to me, that the next thing that he feels that needs to be achieved is a consistent level of opening up the doors that have remained locked for too long. There needs to be much more freedom of movement within the, the units and within the environment, and no suggestion that people are being released from their rooms only to be locked into a wider environment. And if there isn't a clear, justifiable reason for a door to be locked, then it should be opened. So today we gather together to acknowledge and celebrate the significant progress that we have made and that you have just described in terms of your different uh, environments and different DHBs. But we do that in the shared understanding that we've come a long way, but we've still got a long way to go. That things are better, but they're still not good enough. And I'd like to conclude my little section with a poem. And this poem was brought to my mind right at the very beginning of the programme. And um, it inspired an illustration that we used in one of the blogs that we did. And it's still relevant uh, right now. And the poem's called Caged Bird, and it's by Maya Angelou. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. His tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. 
while the free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. But the caged bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. Thanks very much.